Beat Wisdom is a card that I personally underrated for a long time. If you look at my basic ally tier list, you'll see that Pete Wisdom isn't that high. I recently found a build that's extremely fun to play with him, so I wanted to share that here. This is going to be the start of a series that I make where I take cards that either I often don't use or I don't see other people use very often, talk about the cards, and find a build that works for that card and makes it fun to play. This will hopefully help expand your card pool, and it will help me learn things in the process. And for the format of this, I'll start by just talking about Pete Wisdom, the card itself, and then go into some cards that synergize with Pete Wisdom. So a little spoiler here, Uncanny X-Force is very good with him. And then go into a deck build that I made that I feel like really exemplifies what Pete Wisdom is good at and makes Pete Wisdom kind of like the star of the show. This is the format I'm thinking about keeping for these videos. So after you watch this video, let me know what you think about the format and if you think I should change anything about it because I want to make this a good series because I'm personally very interested in it. So let me know in the comments. If you like the content I've been making, if you can take a second to like and subscribe, I'd appreciate that a lot. Also, I just released channel memberships on the channel. So if you want to check that out, you can. No pressure to, but I would appreciate it greatly if you join the channel. So I'll start off with what is bad about Pete Wisdom? Why did I slash other people personally underrate Pete Wisdom? And I think that's because of how expensive he is, number one. It's a four cost ally, which if the four cost ally doesn't have an extremely powerful effect, it's generally not going to be worth it. And then you can see that there's two consequential damage on the three thwart. So those are the things that kind of hold Pete Wisdom back. Because four cost for three thwart and a block isn't necessarily horrible if you consider cards in general. But there's a lot of allies that can do a lot better than that. So as far as allies go, Pete Wisdom has always kind of been towards the bottom for me. Because on his own, he isn't that good. So I do stand by where I put him on the tier list I made for that basic allies tier list. But that tier list specifically wasn't trying to factor in every synergy that you could have. So that tier list wasn't saying that Pete Wisdom is an unusable card. It was just saying that if you don't build specifically around Pete Wisdom or find a build that exemplifies his strengths, he will not be as good as other cards. But now let's go into what's special about Pete Wisdom. So that three thwart that I mentioned is extremely powerful. So if you look at like player side schemes, for instance, they have three per player threat. So in single player, Pete Wisdom can just use one activation to completely finish call for backup, which can then search an ally from your deck or discard pile and just put it into play. And this isn't cost limited either. So Pete Wisdom, for instance, could thwart this down and just bring Nick Fury into play and then draw you three cards, which is crazy strong. That's, that's an amazing combo. That actually is going to be in the deck that I show later. The other thing that's really special about Pete Wisdom is the response of after you resolve the win revealed effects of a treachery card, heal one damage from Pete Wisdom. So that means that Pete Wisdom can actually stick around longer than other allies because he can heal. So you can attack for two, only take one consequential. And then when you get a treachery, which is going to be fairly often, Pete Wisdom will be able to heal up and stick around. So the two attack three thwart stat line if he stays around is basically like having a second hero on the board so now what we need to do is figure out a way to make his strengths shine and mitigate his weaknesses so to mitigate his weaknesses uncanny x-force is great at that it says if each of your characters has the x-force trait each ally you control gets plus one thwart and takes minus one consequential damage so suddenly pete wisdom has uh for thwart and when thwarting a side scheme takes only one consequential damage which means that that does a great job at, mit at mitigating one of pete wisdom's main weaknesses but then he's still really expensive and he's trait locked to x force so for the hero that we pick i think psylocke is a great option because psylocke has way too much money more money than she could ever really use unless you include a bunch of cards like pete wisdom that are extremely expensive because you can see that these psy katana and Psy Knife start and play, and then they're just resource generators for you. So on your first turn, you have six hand size like every other hero, but you also already have two resource generators on the table, meaning that Psylocke can afford turn one turns that basically no other hero in the game can, making Pete Wisdom not actually that hard to afford for her. And if you combo that with the fact that Psylocke wants to flip down a lot uh, because the six hand size 
is very valuable. And when you're in hero, you only have four. And when you're flipping down a lot, you want to be able to keep the main scheme very low on threat and keep the side schemes and board under control. And Pete Wisdom is going to help a lot with the threat removal in this situation. So here are the cards that I would consider. So here are the cards that I think synergize really well with this strategy. So we already went over that Pete Wisdom is the center of the deck. Uncanny X-Force supports that. And since we're playing Psylocke, we also have access to Psychic Kicker, which says hero action, ready an ally. That, that ally gets plus two thwart and plus two attack for its next basic thwart or attack action this phase. So the very first time that I played this deck that I'm going to be showing is was in a multiplayer game. And I got Uncanny X-Force and Pete Wisdom on the table and Psychic Kicker in my first turn. And Pete Wisdom was able to thwart three, take one consequential damage, ready up, thwart for five. Or sorry, not thwart three. He actually has plus one. Like this is so powerful that I honestly forget how strong it is. So he has plus one thwart from Uncanny X-Force. So he's able to thwart four, ready up, and then thwart six on turn one in a multiplayer game. 10 threat removal from one ally in one turn is insane. It was it was so fun. The amount of fun I've had playing that deck is what inspired me to make this video. So then, as mentioned earlier, Pete Wisdom has a lot of thwart, so you want to include these side schemes here. Build support's really good because it searches out on Kenny X-Force. And then specialized training is normally really difficult to finish because it's five per player. But that's not a problem when you have a four thwart ally that you can ready up and give six thwart. So even in multiplayer, specialized training is not hard at all to finish with this deck. In the campaign I'm playing through with uh, Paulina and my friend Johnny, it hasn't been difficult at all to finish these side schemes, and I'm the only one that's been thwarting them. It's just this deck has that much thwart when you lean into this strategy. Call for backup is the one I mentioned earlier. It's just extremely powerful because you get to add any ally. And then why don't we jump ahead to the ally? So the other the other main character of this deck is going to be Cable, who also I haven't really used that much because the uh, four cost is very expensive, and then it's only two thwart and three health. And the response of after Cable thwarts and defeats a side scheme, you get to draw a card. Uh, if there's not that many side schemes, you can't use that ability. So this Uncanny X-Force side scheme archetype for Cable fits him perfectly because then you can get more side schemes out. Cable can sit around not taking any consequential damage for thwarting, and he can thwart three. So meaning that in single player, Cable can just finish build support or call for backup with one activation and draw you a card. And then when you're ready for the final push, he can attack for three, ready with Psychic Kicker, and then attack for five, making it extremely versatile. So you, when you have Pete Wisdom and Cable on the board and Uncanny X-Force, basically side schemes are completely mitigated for an entire multiplayer game. That's been the experience I've had in this playthrough. And especially when you combine that with Psychic Kicker, uh, Psylocke's three thwart combined with Pete Wisdom's 4 with Uncanny X-Force and Cable's 3 with Psychic Kicker and the extra card draw from Cable and Pete Wisdom being able to also attack and then stick around because he'll heal 1 from each treachery that you resolve, meaning that he can actually take Consequential and heal it up and then Cable never actually has to take Consequential makes for an incredibly fun deck. So then other cards that I thought would be fun in this deck is remember Psylocke has those giant turns on turn 1. And you can afford basically everything on turn one. So suit up seemed perfect because you can just get these out, both Cable and Pete Wisdom, into your hand on turn one. Which, you can get them both into your hand with an upgrade that you can likely afford on turn one. So Pete Wisdom, for instance, you play suit up, bring Pete Wisdom, and I brought reinforced suit for Pete Wisdom because... The plus two hit points will be really useful. So if you don't get Uncanny X-Force on the first turn, Pete Wisdom will still stay alive with this reinforced suit and it will allow him to attack and thwart more often. So you don't have to wait on his healing as much. And then for Cable, I grabbed Inspired because it gives plus one thwart and plus one attack. And in multiplayer, that will help you finish these, these side schemes even faster. And also... If you don't have both, or if this just lets you bring in a resource to your hand if you need it, 
So for instance, if you already had Inspired, or let's say you're playing Pete Wisdom, you already have a reinforced suit in your hand. When you play suit up, you can bring Inspired into your hand as well and just use that use that as a resource to help pay for Pete Wisdom. And that's a really fun thing. And then I Pack is another card that goes on to my underrated list. It's really risky sounding because it lets you uh, deal yourself a face down encounter card to draw two cards. And that face down encounter card can be a gamble. But Basically, what you can do is just save IPAC for the final push. And then getting two extra cards on a final push is way more valuable than getting two cards on a different turn. So just that one use of IPAC is worth the one cost. Because if you think about it, it's it's one one cost, meaning IPAC and one other card leave your hand. And then as soon as you use it, you draw two. So the cost kind of cancels out. And then you get the two cards on the turn that you need it most. So it's really, really strong for final pushes. And then when you combine that with Cable's card draw, it's really fun. So like Cable can finish Call for Backup, for instance, let you draw a card because you finished a side scheme, and then Nick Fury comes into play. You get to draw three cards from getting Nick Fury, and then you get IPAC. You draw two more cards. So you've just drawn six cards. And if you, you're playing Psylocke and you started with six cards in your hand, and you have two resource generators. That's 12 cards with two resource generators. It's it's crazy. And in multiplayer, I'm playing X Bunker in this deck, but I don't think it's quite as good for solo. It lets you draw, uh, search the top cards of your deck for any card where X is the number of side schemes in the victory display. So it's a little bit slow for solo, and uh, it only works for players who have the mutant trait. So you can only use it in Alter Ego. So it's it's a little bit limited. It's a, it's very, very good multiplayer. But you don't necessarily have to add this in, in a solo deck. And now we come to the actual deck build. This is what I decided on for the deck. So Cable and Heat Wisdom, IPAC, Uncanny X-Force, the upgrades, Suit Up, and Psychic Kicker, what we already talked about, and these side schemes. And to supplement that, just the three basic resources because they're extremely powerful. Avengers Mansion because Psylocke can afford it really easy and then get you more card draw and economy throughout the game. It helps to mitigate Psylocke's only real weakness of having four cards in hand in hero form, which she still has more money in hero with her four hand size than most heroes because the two resource generators plus four cards. That's like six resources that are in your hand. Whereas if you have five cards in hero form, that's only five resources that are in your hand for a normal hero. So she's still more rich than other heroes in hero form, even with four hand size. The problem is just with four hand size, you might not see a card that's useful at that time because you could, for instance, need to thwart and then you draw uh, suit up a side scheme and an upgrade and a resource, which that's not going to happen that often, but that can happen. And Avengers Mansion helps mitigate those bad hands that you can get when you have four hand size. And then Caliban is in the deck because Caliban searches other X-Force allies. And then Deadpool is a really fun ally that works extremely well in this deck because he has the X-Force trait. So he combos really well with the side schemes, meaning you can get a lot of value out of the out of Deadpool without necessarily having to use his ability to add the acceleration tokens. But you still can if you want to. Deathlock, since we have upgrades in the deck and he's X-Force combos really well because he can just attach Inspired or Reinforce Suit on him when you play him. Phantom X is an ally that's really fun because the EVA support that's out there just gets to stick around. And I don't use that card that often, but he's really cool. So I thought this was the perfect deck to put him in. Uh, you could just cut Phantom X and EVA to get down to 40 cards if you wanted to. Uh, Nick Fury is just really strong, and he doesn't shut off your Uncanny X-Force as long as you play him last. So with this deck, you just play Nick Fury last. And then Pete Wisdom we already talked about. X-23 has three attack and readies, which is powerful. Marrow is just two cost, deals two damage when she comes into play, and then can attack for two. A lot of damage there. And that's about it. It's just a bunch of X-Force allies. You're using the X-Force support, and then Cable and... Uh, Pete Wisdom can thwart down anything you want. And I put the campaign box here because I built this deck specifically to play in campaign mode in the three-player on the expert camp expert version of the Next Evolution campaign. 
I'm playing Psylocke with this deck. It's slightly different because I have uh, like a Helicarrier and the X-Force Bunker because it's a multiplayer game. But I built this for solo because most of the people that watch my channel, I think, play solo. I'm going to do a poll about that, but I think most people play solo. And it's been so fun playing this campaign. Johnny's playing Protection Wolverine, and then Paulina is playing Aggression Shadowcat, and I'm playing just uh, not just I'm playing Leadership, and we do not have a Justice player, but I'm the only one that's thwarting, and I'm able to clear the threat for the entire board as a, as a Leadership player. I can put out I can clear all the player side schemes, deal with all the side schemes that come out of the deck, deal with all the threat on the main scheme as the leadership player while having blockers for the team which is amazing it's one of the most fun decks i've played and then also i'm very useful on the final pushes so in the last version we just finished on the run and i had spent the beginning dealing with the side schemes and whatnot and then on the final push i was able to draw do that combo where i draw like 12 cards and then I did a I did over 40 damage in one turn as the leadership player. So this deck is able to do all the thwarting for the whole team, clear the player side schemes to help people build up faster, and then on the final pushes, I can reliably do 30 to 40 damage every time, which is so fun. I highly recommend this deck. Pete Wisdom really shines in this deck, and I really like the archetype. And that's all I have for you today. I'll probably play this deck on the channel. Like this video. Uh, leave a like and subscribe. It helps a lot. And look at joining the channel. You don't have to. As always, you don't you don't have to join the channel. But if you like the benefits that come with any of the tiers, I encourage you to join. I'm excited for the for building decks for people and doing gameplay analyses. I think it'll be fun. And let me know what you think about the format of this video, because I'm very open to changes with this format. It's the first video I'm making of this series, and I want to make it as good as I can. So if you want anything added or anything taken away or just the order changed, let me know and I'll look at that for the next video. Stay zesty and see you next time. Peace.